My name is Rick Renner, and I'm in ancient Ephesus, seated on the ruins of the school of Tyrannus. The school of Tyrannus is referred to in Acts 19, verse 9. It was a lecture hall where the Apostle Paul taught the Bible every day for years while he was in Ephesus. And from this very location, the Word of God went to the whole Roman province of Asia. About the year 110, during the rule of the Emperor Trajan, this big facade behind me was built. This is the Celsus Library. It is fabulous. It was one of the largest libraries of the ancient world. People came here to read. They came here to enhance their education. Education is so very important. Don't diminish the value of education spiritually. You need to read. You need to study. You need to keep your head on straight about your doctrine and what you believe. The truth is, most people make doctrinal mistakes because they don't have knowledge. They're gifted, they have great ideas, exciting concepts, but so many times you can't link them together doctrinally. Mm, if you really think them through, they don't really make sense. We need to know what the Bible says and build our faith on the rock-solid teaching of Scripture. The Apostle Paul told us that the reason most people make doctrinal mistakes is because they just don't know the Bible. Listen to what he said in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. He says, From which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling. He says they've swerved from right doctrine, desiring to be teachers of the law. Now listen to this. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. So many times people are masterful teachers, motivational speakers. They're really gifted in that way. But mentally, they lack a lot of information. We need to know the scriptures. We need to use our brains. God gave us minds, and God wants us to love Him with all of our mind. As we study the Word of God, we need to know what we're talking about and see that our faith is established on a rock-solid foundation. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Welcome to the program. My name is Rick Renner, and I'm here with Denise, and we're just talking about what a great week we've had with you in the Word. It's been excellent. I have enjoyed it so much. We have really dug deep into 1 Timothy to see what the Holy Spirit had to say about the end of the age, about seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, and how we need to stay free from them. And Rick, this is a very sober teaching very sobering that we pay attention to what we're taking in as food for our heart. Well, our heart is very important. And if you eat poison, guess what? You get sick. You need to make sure you eat good food. I'll never forget years ago, I was in Siberia ministering in a particular town. And I walked into a restaurant. This was back in the early days when the Soviet Union had just collapsed and there weren't a lot of restaurants back in those days. It was actually a cafeteria. And when I walked into that cafeteria and looked around, I said to my friend who was traveling with me, we shouldn't eat here. This is very, very dirty. But we were hungry and there wasn't anywhere else to go. So I sat down and ate at a table in front of a plate that I knew was full of questionable food. And guess what? I got sick. And you know what? I was sick for a long time. It took me months to recover from what I ate. Mm. It is very important spiritually that we be careful about what we eat. We need to keep our heads on straight, especially in this age when there's a lot of strange things being taught. We need to stick with Scripture. By the way, this is why I've written my book called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. Order this. Today is the end of the week. Order your copy today. We'll get it right to you. This is one book you're going to be really glad you read. Can I Let's, say something about sure, that real right quick? You really are going to be glad if you if you get that book because there's such a soberingness there and there's an encouragement there because I know as you watch the news, as you hear what's going on, that it can become so disheartening and sometimes frightening. And when you read a book like this, it 
it encourages you and it, it grounds you in the Word of God. And of course, that brings great security. Listen to what Rodney Howard Brown said about this book. I sent the book to several leaders that are my friends because I wanted them to tell me truthfully, what do you think of this book? I really wanted to know. So they began to answer me and they answered me and answered me and answered me. And this response really blessed me. Listen to this. We cannot allow popular culture to influence, nor can we allow false doctrine to invade the church. And Rick spells out the solution in this book. We need a mighty move of the Holy Spirit and the establishment of sound doctrine for the foundation of the church. It's time for us to keep our head on straight in a world gone crazy. Thank you, Rick, for laying out the blueprint for the last day church to get back on track. If not, judgment will be the result. Rodney Howard Brown. That blessed me so much. Anyway, I know you're going to be blessed by it too. And we're also offering you the series by the same title. It's 15 parts. comes in multiple formats called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. Order your copy today. You can get it on our website. But today we're going to return to 1 Timothy chapter 1. And today, Denise, we're going to skip our anchor verse and we're going to go right to verse 3. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I hope you have your Bible. So let's go there. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, where Paul is writing to Timothy. And he says to Timothy, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. I've told you before that that word besought means this is a job Timothy did not want. The word besought, the Greek word parakaleo, which means several things, to beg, to plead, to pray, but it was also the word used by commanders before they sent their troops into battle. And by using this word, Paul is very honest with Timothy. He says, Timothy, there's a battle in front of you. It is a battle for doctrine. It is a fight for faith. And I'm begging you, I'm pleading you, enter into the fray and do your part. Set these leaders that are in error, set them straight. And that's why the verse goes on to say that thou mightest charge. In Greek, it means give a direct commandment to some. The word some in Greek is the word tesen. It describes a notable some. Even if it was a smaller group, it was a group that had a lot of influence. Mm. And he said, I want you to com command these that are some, these with influence, that they teach no other doctrine. No other doctrine, a compound of two Greek words, the word heteros, which means something of a different kind or something of a different sort. The word didaskalos, which is the Greek word for masterful teaching or doctrine. But when you compound these two words together, it's not just didaskalos, it's not just doctrine, but it's doctrine that is heteros. It's of a different kind. It's of a different sort. There's something wrong with it. It's been twisted. It's been modified. It no longer matches the authentic teaching of Scripture. Now, why do people get into error? Why do people get into error? I think it's a very important question. And I've called today's teaching sincerely wrong. I have no doubt about people's sincerity, and that's not my job or your job to question people's sincerity. But many people are sincerely wrong. They really believe they're teaching something right, but they're wrong. And I want to give you an example. Many years ago here in the former Soviet Union, people were talking about God raising up a Joshua generation. And actually, people were talking about that all over the world. Everywhere you went, it was popular at that time to herald the coming of the Joshua generation that was going to lead the body of Christ into the land of promise. Well, in our part of the world, there was a young preacher who was very notable, very famous, very charismatic, had a lot of appeal, and he came up with a new term. He said, we need to be the Nimrod generation. He thought that was so exciting because in Genesis chapter 10, Nimrod is called a mighty hunter before the Lord. Some translations call it a mighty warrior. And he said, that's what we need to be. We need to be Nimrod in the earth. We need to be mighty hunters, mighty warriors before the Lord. But there's a problem with that because the Hebrew actually says Nimrod was a mighty monster. He was a horrible man. In Hebrew. He was atrocious before the Lord. Yeah, in Hebrew. He was atrocious before the Lord. We don't want to be a part of the Nimrod generation. Unfortunately, that's probably what we're getting in these days. But this was very sincere, but he was sincerely wrong. I remember saying to him, what in the world are you talking about? He didn't really study. He didn't really think through. He just thought it sounded exciting. 
you got to dig deep in the scripture. You need to know what you're talking about. And many people are sincere, but they are sincerely wrong. And when we come to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, I believe that Paul gives the credit of a doubt to these people that are teaching error. Notice what he says in verse 7. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. The first thing it says in the King James Version is desiring. It's the Greek word thalo, which describes to long for something, to want something, to desire something. However, the tense that is used here means they are perpetually desiring. They're consumed with a longing. They really want something. Or here we find a very sincere, good desire. They want to be spiritual leaders. They really desire it. They earnestly long to be in a spiritual position of leadership. And Paul goes on to say, desiring to be teachers of the law. Now, that is a very interesting word in the Greek text. It's only used three times in the whole New Testament. The word noma didaskalos, from the word nomas, which is where we get the word for law. That's what the word law means. Didaskalos is the word for a teacher. You compound the two words together. It looks like it means teachers of the law. But it's teachers that are strict. Or the Greek word really referred to a masterful teacher, a scripture lawyer. Hmm. That's how one man has translated it. A scripture lawyer or someone scholarly in interpreting the Bible. So they have a desire to be scholarly. They have a desire to speak with authority. But the problem is, according to Paul in verse 7, they understand neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. The word understanding is the Greek word nuintes, which is a form of the word nous, the word for the mind. It means there's something defective or faulty in the way that they're reasoning. They haven't come to a proper conclusion about what they are teaching. Their brain's not working. There's something defective in their mental process. They're not really thinking through what they're teaching. So Paul says, number one, they have desire. That's very clear. Really have desire. Number two, he says they want to be scholarly. But number three, there's something defective in the way they're reasoning about the scriptures. He says, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. He says, understanding neither what they say, what they say in Greek is the word legus, and what they're habitually saying, what they're purporting, what they're promoting, neither whereof they affirm. The word affirm means what they're trying to establish. So they're trying to establish a truth, a new idea, a new concept, but it has no roots. It has no foundation. That's the problem today with people trying to teach that there's no hell. They're trying to do away with hell. They think they have scriptures for that. They don't. They don't. They don't have any foundation for that. There's something defective in that kind of thinking. Follow it all the way through to its logical conclusion. Or people today that are trying to do away with sin, they're saying you don't even need to repent of sin. A lot of people today are teaching you don't even need to repent once you become a Christian, that repentance is finished. There's no more need for repentance. Well, you know what? I know people who teach that are very sincere, but they are very sincerely wrong. They're just wrong. Or some of the teaching we're hearing today about grace, it is so far off track, but you would have to be very sincere to teach some of that stuff. You'd have to be very gullible to teach some of what's being taught. I know of one particular minister, I can't even listen to that person anymore. That person has gone so far off track, but I know the person's sincere. I know they're sincere. But from what they're teaching, it tells me they don't really know the Bible. Because if you know the Bible, you can't teach some of this nonsense. The Bible gives you a foundation. It gives you a foundation. And this leads us to our next verse today, which is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. So let's go there. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, where the writer of Hebrews was describing this exact scenario people who should have been further along spiritually, but they weren't established in the Bible. And he addresses it in Hebrews chapter 5, beginning in verse 12. Look at it. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Look at the first of that verse. 
For when for the time you ought to be teachers. The word ought is the word a fellow. It describes an obligation, a duty, really a moral duty. A better translation would be by now you are obligated to be teachers. After everything you've seen, after everything you've heard, after all the material that is available for you to read, my goodness, you by this time ought to be a teacher. The word teacher is the word didaskaloi, the plural form of didaskalos, which is the New Testament equivalent of a masterful teacher or a rabbi. So the writer of Hebrews says, my goodness, you have heard so much. So much information has been available to you. You've sat under such good ministry. You've read so many books. You have seen so much. You have heard so much that by now you really are obligated to be a rabbi. You should be masterful in your understanding. Isn't that amazing? Then he goes on to say, but you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Every word in the Bible is important. And this word need is very important. It's the Greek word kreen. It describes a deficit. He's identifying a deficit in their life. He says, you lack real understanding of the foundations. You have a spiritual deficit and you need someone to teach you. The word teach in this verse is the word didasko, the same Greek word that was used to describe a teacher who would sit right by a student and that teacher would teach the student. It's the equivalent of saying, listen, by this time, you ought, the Greek word a fellow, you have a moral obligation. It ought to be a fact by now. After all you've heard, after all you've seen, you ought to be a didaskaloi. You ought to be a masterful teacher. You ought to be a rabbi. After everything you've heard and everything you've seen, everything you've read, but instead you have need, a real deficit that someone teach you. And here's what it means. You need somebody to t take you to school. You need somebody to take you to school. Now, when I was a child, I had a hard time learning to write. Isn't that funny? Because today I'm a writer. I mean, I write and write and write. But I had such a hard time reading. I thought I would never get out of the first grade. <laughs> I was so confused trying to learn how to read. You know what my confusion was? Denise, I don't know if I've ever told you this. Back in those days, the big book we used was Fun with... Dick and Jane. Dick and Jane. And in the story of Dick and Jane, there was Dick, there was Jane. And there was, there was their dogs, Sally. And there was a Spot. There was Puff and there was Spot. Uh -huh. Well, I thought there was one more person. Because it said Dick and Jane, I thought there was a character in the story called Anne. And every time I saw the word and, I thought it was describing a person. I thought it was Dick, it was Anne, and it was Jane, and then it was Anne again, and then it was Spot, and then it was Anne again, and it was Puff. And I was so confused. And not only that, I had a hard time learning how to actually write my letters. That's why I have a callus on my finger to this day. I have a callus right here to this day. I'm left-handed. I would sit at my desk. I would press that pencil, trying so hard to write those letters and form those letters. And I can remember my teacher standing at my side, helping me saying, Ricky, you can do this. Let's get it right. She would read with me, Dick and Jane. Rick, that's not a person. She was trying to establish me to help me understand the basics of English. Well, now take that same idea into this verse. This verse says, these people are trying to be profoundly spiritual and deep before they've been established in the elementary principles. He says, you have need, crayon, we've identified a deficit, you need to go back to first grade, you need someone to come alongside of you and establish you in what he calls in this verse, the first principles. The word first is the Greek word, our case, it describes that which is first or that which is elementary. The word principles is the Greek word stokeion. The word stokeion describes fundamentals, rudimentary knowledge, and in this verse, the writer of Hebrews says to his readers and to you and me, hey, before you try to be too deep, make sure you know your ABCs. I was saying to Denise before we filmed the program today, a lot of people are sincere. They have a gift to preach, a gift to teach. I mean, they really are charismatic and wow, people are just drawn to them. So they're quickly promoted. 
before they know the ABCs of doctrine. And that's why they make mistakes. Somebody might say, well, but they're sincere, they're called. That's wonderful, but let me ask you a question. If you know a child who says, I want to be a surgeon, do you immediately give them a scalpel and tell them to begin operating on people? Or do you tell them first they have to finish their education and they have to go to school and learn something about the human body and learn how to operate? Of course, they have to learn. You would never send a child into an operating room with a scalpel who hasn't been taught the basics about surgery. And what we have unfortunately done in the church is we've elevated giftings and personality before people were trained to really understand Scripture. And that's why they're making mistakes. They don't know the ABCs. That's not a criticism. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. And by the way, right now I'm offering you my study guide in my series called Foundations of Faith, What You Need to Know to Become a Mature Believer. You need to know these things. And if you feel like you have a deficit in your understanding of basic Bible doctrine, order this. It's on our website along with everything else on our website. But the writer of Hebrews says you have need that someone teach you again what be the first principles of the oracles of God. Isn't this powerful, Denise? Yes, it is, Rick. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you as, as I'm sure our listeners are listening to you and thinking, you know, what happens that we get older in the Lord and then we're not teachers. We're not, we're, we don't, we're not a rabbi. What happened? Did we waste our time? No, everybody's not called to be a rabbi. And that's really not what he's saying. But he's saying, by now you ought to know a lot. He's not really saying everybody's supposed to teach. He's just saying with everything you've heard, my goodness, you could be a rabbi by now or you should be. We've heard a lot, especially the church in the Western world. My goodness, we are accountable for so much. We have heard so much. But many people lack a deficit because they've not been established in the bare basics. The bare basics are really important. Anyway, we're out of time, but this has been good today. Very really good. Really good. If we can pray for you, be sure to let us know. But Denise and I will be back in just a moment, and we're going to pray for you. The world is changing. In fact, it's more than changed. It's gone crazy. We are living in a world where faith is questioned and sin is welcome, where people seem to have lost their minds about what is right and wrong. It seems truth has been turned upside down. In Rick Renner's new book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy, Rick reveals the disastrous consequences of a society in spiritual and moral collapse. In this book, you'll discover what Christians need to be doing to stay out of the chaos and anchor to truth. You'll learn how to stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit, discern right and wrong teaching, how to be grounded in prayer, and how to be spiritually prepared for living in victory in these last days. Leading ministers from around the world are calling this book essential for every believer. And right now, it's available for just $15 online and in stores wherever books are sold. You can also order the 15-part teaching series when you call or go online right now. Rick takes you deep into New Testament prophecies about the end of the age, and what you need to do to sail successfully through turbulent end-time waters. Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $24. Get the book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy, for just $15, online and in stores, wherever books are sold. And don't miss this powerful teaching series. Call now, 1-800-742-5593, or go to renner.org to order. Get yours today. My name is Joe Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia, and I want to say thank you for watching today and thank you for your support. It's because of ministry partners like you that we're able to distribute quality Bible teaching around the world. And because of your support, we're not only able to air these programs by television, we're also able to translate Christian books into other languages. Because of your financial support, people in areas who have no Christian teaching of any kind in places where getting a Bible is very difficult, we have been able to distribute millions of these Christian teachings around the world. The Bible says if you know the truth, it will set you free. And we have seen this happen over and over again. We have received thousands of testimonies of how these books we've distributed have dramatically changed people's lives. This is all because of the generous support of our partners, partners like you. 
Will you consider joining this vision today? Would you consider becoming a partner with us right now? When you do, your help allows us to reach more people with quality Bible teaching from God's Word. With your help together, we can take the gospel of Christ both to the nearby world and to the ends of the earth. That's the vision. Your gift of any size will support these essential and urgent work of getting the Bible and Christian resources into the hands of people who don't have access to it. Please call right now, 1-800-742-5593 or go online to renner.org. Through your generous support, you can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives. This is Rick Renner again, and I want to say thank you for being with me and Denise today. We have had such a good time sharing the Bible with you, just coming right into your space. And thank you for opening the door and let us join you today. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to our partners. If you've become a partner with us, we are so grateful for you. We can never be grateful enough for you. You are doing so much. Your seed is feeding people all over the world the Word of God and protecting them from the deception that is now in the world today. Thank you so much. And if you need prayer, let us know. We believe in prayer. Our team would just love to pray with you. Every day I get emails about prayer requests. We really hear from you and we put our faith together with you. Right now, we're also offering you my book called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. I like the cover because it shows one man standing against a crazy world. You might feel that way from time to time, but you have the power of God in you. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And just because the world seems to be going crazy does not mean you have to. You can keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. This book will help you do it. We're offering you the series by the same title. All of this is available on our website. But Denise, let's pray for our friends. Okay. Father, we thank you for our TV family, really our family. Thank you that you're building us together. You're building us in faith. We thank you for the power of the Word of God. We believe Ecclesiastes 8.4, that where the Word of a King is, there's power. And we pray that your divine word would release its power in our life and their lives in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hasn't this been good? It's been great, Rick. Thank you for being with us. We're always so excited when we know that we're going to be sitting down with you to open the Bible. And we'll see you in the next program. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity.